Hey, good morning, everyone. How you doing? It's your boy. I'm back. Not that I ever went anywhere. Look, I wanted to share something with you briefly. Uh, I shared this short message or word of knowledge, if you will, at our Feast of Tabernacles celebration last Saturday, October the 7th. Um, and I know there's a lot going on in the world right now, so this is not intended to be commentary on that, but maybe it speaks to it. I don't know. So just keep this in mind that even though the message is being delivered today, the message has actually already been pre-recorded. So it's pre-recorded, but the delivery is delayed. Okay. And it's essentially just about tabernacles and the true meaning of tabernacles, uh, which I hope will bless you. So here we go. With my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. With a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord. Why do we praise? You know, Deuteronomy 16 speaks about all the feasts uh, that the children of Israel observe or that they celebrated the, the feasts and appointed times that the Lord their God said, hey, I need you to come and meet me here at these appointed times. And this is what you're to do. So it talks about Passover. It talks about Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks, the Festival of Weeks. And it also talks about Tabernacles. And when I was reading my devotional, maybe about a month and a half ago or so, I came across a verse that was shared in that chapter of Deuteronomy 16, where it says, at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. Uh, here's the broader context for the verse. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. And I got to thinking, um, you know, what's in a name? A name represents somebody's character. Right. Um, it, it, it's a symbol of sorts. It's a it's a um, hmm, what else? What else? Uh, I want to say it, it, it almost stands in for that individual or that person, place or thing. So even if the individual isn't in the room. Right. Well, let me back up for a second. Here's here. Here's something that you can connect with. There are names that when they're said, we have a certain reaction. Right. We're triggered in a sense. Whether that's a good reaction, a bad reaction, or indifferent, we know there are certain people's names that just make us go, whew. And so that essentially encapsulates what a name is, that it, it stands in, it represents, it symbolizes that individual's character, right? We may hear a name, and, and so uh, when we hear that name, it's like, oh, yeah, that person is loyal, that person is honest, they're trustworthy. If you want somebody who's going to get it done, like you just need it done, this is who you call on. And so a name, uh, in a sense, is the total embodiment of the character of an individual. And in particular, we're talking about the Lord our God. And the Lord our God has chosen a place for his name to dwell, not only in relation to the feast, but even right now. In Ephesians 2 and 22, it says, and in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And we just talked about God choosing a place for his name to dwell. And now we understand, based on Ephesians 2 and 22, that we are being built together, have been built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. So now God's name is, in fact, dwelling in us, his character, his nature, right? Uh, what makes God God is inside of us, uh, just like in Philippians 2 when it talks about Christ and in his humility and all the, how the fullness of God dwelled bodily therein. Um, but, you know, sometimes because you belong to the Lord, uh, because he loves you, because he has plans and purposes for you, uh, others will be jealous. Right. That's just a flat out fact. And we see this in Psalm 68, verse 16, where God has chosen Mount Zion as a place for his name to dwell, where he's going to rest or abide. And there are other mountains in this particular chapter, Mount Bashan, that are jealous. And Psalm 68, 16 says, why gaze in envy, you rugged mountain, at the mountain where God chooses to reign, where the Lord himself will dwell forever. And so sometimes we face trials, tribulations, and troubles simply because we belong to the Lord. Um, 
Well, moving on to 1 Peter chapter 2, it talks about the living stone, Jesus Christ, and how we are living stones too, those who believe in him. Uh, 1 Peter 2, 4 through 6, and then 9 through 10, he is the living stone. You are living stones built into a spiritual house, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that we would declare his praise from bringing us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Uh, so not only are we being built into a spiritual house, right, uh, to be the dwelling place for God, not only are we living stones being built into that spiritual house, that temple, that tabernacle, right, hold on to that, we have been chosen by him. We are a royal priesthood and we are a holy nation. And God has made us his own special kind of thing, if you will. We are a peculiar people, other translations say. And so we praise, right? We praise because in him we now carry his glory and his light because he's brought us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Now. You know, I did a little I did a little study at the seminary of the road. I, I know a thing or two. I, I can spout some facts and some verbiage and words that'll make your head spin like what? But you you should sincerely think, am I just making this up or is this true? And this is the same thing I said when I shared the message with, with my family. And I said if we want to know it's true, we should go to the greatest teacher, the greatest philosopher, the one who gave his life and showed us the most excellent way in Jesus Christ. And so the teacher in John 14, verse 1 through 3 says this, you believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. That word for rooms or mansions, as you've probably heard it said, also means dwelling places, also means tabernacles, right? I go to prepare a place for you that you will be where I am. Beloved, we are those rooms, those mansions, those dwelling places, those tabernacles, those, that, that body in which God, in which Jesus is pleased to dwell by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the place that he went to go prepare for us is us. Now, the scripture talks about different types of bodies and all of that, right? We know that the flesh that we have right now is is not the type of body that we'll have once everything is changed in the twinkling of an eye. Uh, but we are that tabernacle of the living God, and God lives in us by the power of the Holy Spirit through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus says, there you will be where I am. Well, where is he? He's in a place where peace abides. He's in a place where joy reigns, and he's in a place where righteousness has no end. And so earlier, I asked the question, why do we praise? We praise because God has chosen us. We praise because God loves us. And we praise because God lives in us. And not only that, also because the Lord our God continues to invite us to bring heaven to earth through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So remember, when we talk about celebrating the Feast of Tabernacles, when we talk about being the body of Christ when we talk about Jesus coming to uh, live in us and it's not long it's no longer I that live but it's Christ who lives through me this is what it means amen y'all be blessed